Undebai, and I welcome to this channel where they give now one get update of what they happen for we be Afran territory and how the zoo go take fall down. Now, so this man, Professor Molumba, who I know him very well. This man where they carry the message of unity of Africa go around the world. For here, they want the Fnubu say make he leave Biafra, or less he go collect better water water, and nothing if he do, Biafra will see go make na listen to him. That you've teased out a number of very useful things. In fact, in point of fact, I don't think we agree on much, uh, particularly when you introduce uh, the subject of diversity. And, and there is something that perhaps you've not spoken to very directly but you've mentioned i think it is your kinsman chinua achebe who writing in 1983 the trouble with nigeria said that the problem of nigeria and by extension of africa is simply and squarely a problem of leadership and i can't agree with you more i personally have said in a different setting that part of the African problem is that those who have power have no ideas and those who have ideas have no power. And I can't agree with you more. Uh, one cannot even quarrel with the question of the diversity that you've talked about. In fact, if you go down in history in 1963, perhaps before I come to 1963, let me go back to the Berlin Project the arbitrary creation of what we now call countries were, was essentially to design units that could not function. The post-colonial African state was not supposed to function, they were supposed to collapse. And that debate did preoccupy the founding leaders of Africa. And you will remember in 1963, there was the debate whether the inherited boundaries should be inviolable. The arguments were then put forth, I think, a lot more strongly at that time by Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, and Haben Bedbela, and Gamal Abdel Nasser. So the doctrine of the inviolability of inherited boundaries took root. The argument they had then was that if you started redrawing boundaries, then there would be too much conflict in Africa. And for a time, of course, we were tied down and we still continue to be tied down with these artificial boundaries. Simon, you will agree with me that indeed, the reason why the Osage Kwame Nkuruma called for the immediate unification of Africa was the very same thing that is happening now. He said, if we don't unite now, and these presidents and prime ministers that are emerging in these little artificial countries begin to get used with political power and the trappings of office, then Africa will never know peace. And I can't agree with you more. This is not a forum for going deep into history, but this is something I've said elsewhere. Your typical European nation is a nation state. One cannot quarrel with that. You go to Sweden, it is the Swedish, they have a small Finnish population and they have special governance for them. You go to Finland, a Finnish population, a small Swedish population, they have a problem with them. And indeed in Europe, as you've rightly said, in countries like Spain, where you have a multiplicity of, uh, of nations, the state is divided into 17 ethnically pure nations. The same is true of Switzerland. During our own lifetime, I think you and me have seen the Soviet Union collapse along tribal lines, creating Russia, Ukraine, Kyrgyzstan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and all these. Belarusia and all these. The question that we must grapple with, and unfortunately, Simon, we are afraid to grapple with it. And the truth is that our fear is informed by our hypocrisy. We are 
hypocritical, particularly those of us who have had the advantage of what we call education, that is formal schooling, so that you would hear somebody who is a Yoruba, for example, or an Igbo, when he is at a forum where he thinks that he or she will be accused of ethnicity, saying, you Nigeria must be the way it is. I've been on record as saying that most African countries must be renegotiated for their survival. The Swiss renegotiated their country. That is how you have a very weak center in Bern, you have the French speaking, the German speaking, the Roman speaking, and the Italian speaking. Aside from Tanzania, which through the very active effort of Malimu Julius Kambara Genyerere, there is not a single African country that is grappling with the question of what you've described as negative diversity. And I can't agree with you more until the day that Africa begins to confront how to deal with diversity, there'll be conflict after conflict in Africa. And as I conclude, I want to give you an example, if only to lend credence to your own argument. Ethiopia now. Ethiopia was being touted as a country that was beginning to realize major economic gains. As I speak to you now, the Tigre, are rebelling against the government in Addis Ababa. The Amhara are also worried about the government in Addis Ababa. The Oromo are doing the same thing. Somalia is the same thing. You go to Sudan in Darfur, in the Nuba Mountains, in Abia. You go to Southern Sudan, you and me know the problem between the Nuer and the Dinka and the others. You go to Central African Republic, you go to the Democratic Republic of Congo, you go to even countries that we don't talk about very loudly, you go to Angola, the Ovambo and the Ovimbundu, you go now to South Africa as I speak to you, the problem of the Zulu, uh, now that they want to arrest Zuma, is beginning to arise, you go to Senegal, the problem of the Casamans, you go to Cameroon, you know the problem there in uh, Ambazonia, you come to your own country, the Odudua Republic and Biafra, and one can go on and on. And I am suggesting to you, as I conclude, that you remember 2020 was meant to be the year of silencing the guns in Africa. The guns were never silenced. And we have now declared this decade as the decade of silencing the guns. And it is important, and I can't agree with you more, Simon, that until and unless African countries are renegotiated for their sustainability, African countries are going to collapse. In Nigeria, there may be, and you can hold these artificial countries for a long time by force of arm, but wisdom demands that you renegotiate them. And I've been on record as saying that it's important for the Abuja administration to listen to what is being said by the Igbo people in Biafra, to what is being said by the Ijo, to what is being said by the Ibibio, to what is being said by the Odudua. And that is the only way in which we are going to sustain these countries. Otherwise, one day, what is going to happen to many African countries is what happens to Yugoslavia. And it is instructive that the year before Yugoslavia collapsed, what had happened is an opinion poll had been conducted and it reported that the people of Yugoslavia felt more Yugoslavia than they were Serbians or Slovenes. Within one year, the country that Tito had put together by force of arm and by ideology collapsed. And you know what happened in Yugoslavia. And as I said at the beginning, you know what happened with the Soviet Union. And you too know, even in China, which we think is homogeneous, you know the agitation of the Tibetans. You know the agitation of the Uyghurs. Even in India, the federal structures are working federal structure because Nigeria is not federal. Nigeria claims to be federal, you and me know that that is not true. There was an attempt to renegotiate Nigeria before the Civil War. And you will remember 
the meeting that was attended by Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku in Aburi and the Aburi principal, perhaps, I do not know whether it's too late, but perhaps there may be wisdom in going back to Aburi and beginning to ask what it is that can be done. And these are things that I think we as Africans ought to bring on the table now because if we do, there's going to be so many conflicts in Africa and it will be to the joy of the arms sellers in Europe and America and progressively Asia. So Simon, I agree with you and I understand that indeed what is happening in Africa even when we talk about preparedness, not just for COVID, for everything, not just for COVID. Your typical scientist does not have the resources which he or she needs in order to engage in serious research. I remember two years ago I was in Vienna, Austria, and I spoke and said all Africans should try and come back home during the question and answer session, a young girl, a doctor from Zimbabwe stood up and he, she said she agreed with me on everything except she wanted me to ask, to answer one question. Said I was a doctor in Zimbabwe. When I left, my salary was the equivalent of five United States dollars and I had not received it for six months. Should I still go back to Zimbabwe? I said no. And, and my answer was informed by reality. Many a professional in Africa cannot function because our governments do not have the wisdom and the sense to resource them. And that is why I said that re research and development is critical. Your typical African government will use money to buy arms. And in Africa during this COVID period, there is not a single country Perhaps there is two exceptions in this regard, Rwanda and Tanzania, where funds set aside for COVID has not been stolen. Because the African government is a hunting ground, as you rightly said. Those who get into government see it as a job. They are job seekers whose only desire is to go into government and steal and to get pensions thereafter. It is in Africa where you find politicians seeking pensions, former president seeking pensions, and members of parliament seeking pensions and councillors. So I hope, Simon, that this debate which you planted in our minds today will not stop here. How can we introduce diversity of a positive kind? Because it appears to me, if I hear you correctly, that sometimes in order to unite, you must disengage. And that if you are in a bad marriage to remain there simply because divorcing gives you the mark of Cain upon your forehead, you suffer eternal pain. I would want to engage you elsewhere so that this argument of negative diversity is looked at very keenly as one of the ways in which we can save the continent of Africa and make her unite. Thank you very much. Yes, now welcome to back to this channel. As now here within the professor talk now, and within Prime Minister Simon Ekba, see two of them, they agree. See, the only way for Africa and the zoological entity now to break them down. I'll make now share this.